it is a completely different ideal where it says that I do not think I come to abolish the Torah and the prophets rather to fulfill or to finish that's that's a proper translation finish from the Hebrew word shalim well let me read it from the Hebrew slowly El ha kashab bu shabote li chafpar Torah elah li cha shalim translated do not think or consider or reckon that I have come to bull to bull the Torah rather to deliver it unto its ultimate goal that's interesting because here where it says li har par I went and I was researching because it didn't make sense didn't say destroy chabel or batal it said par par means bull with the prefix li it means bullying takes on a prepositional so yeah Sure was speaking a imagery of what he came not to do. We could even translate this to bully. Think not that I come to bully the Torah, rather to deliver it unto its ultimate goal. Shalim, to finish it, to bring it to a condition where it needs to be and understood. This need to be fully understood that he did not use the word fulfill but shalim to finish to deliver it to deliver it unto its ultimate goal this is what this term and expression liha shalim actually mean and it says here that he did not come to bully the law he did not come to force it to do what he wanted it to do or to define it in a way that he personally thought it should be defined but to deliver it unto the ultimate goal which has been established within the divine nature of the Father Yahuwah this was his goal and this is why when he was on the tree he used the same term E Shalim it is finished it is finished. Same word. Shalim. It is finished. Meaning I have delivered and brought the Torah to its ultimate goal. I have for I have finished it. I have allowed it to do in me what it was supposed to do. Unto its ultimate goal, which was to bring the Yitzhahara of sin in the human nature to its death. Shalim. It is finished. Same expression that is used here. This is what he accomplished. See, he started off with this goal, to Shalim. And he finished with this goal, Shalim. This must be understood. Because this is the life of fulfillment. Okay? This is the life of fulfillment. When you start something, the object is to finish it. If you don't finish it, then you have not uh, completed your purpose. And when you enter into the Messianic Hebrew faith with the objective to understand the will of the Father, once you understand the will of the Father, then your responsibility is to fulfill the will of the Father unto its ultimate goal. This is what we teach in this ministry. This is what we desire for people to do. Not to sit there and to 
Look at me as if I'm some angel from heaven. I'm a son of Elohim just like you're a son of Elohim. We're on an equal standard. But we have different gifts. This is my gift, teaching. So I do my thing. I teach. I instruct. Understanding that what I teach and instruct, I must be faithful to complete in my own personal relationship with Yahuwah. And I must be an example of what I teach and preach to those who I am teaching and preaching to. I'm going for the ultimate goal. I'm going to shalim the word in my life as Yahshua shalim. To finish, I started. Which is to perfect myself through the obedience of faith. In the obedience of the commandments. By the power of the Holy Spirit. To destroy all Yitzhakara within my flesh. Evil inclinations within my flesh that opposes the will of the Father. Now let's move on. Is that properly understood? Do everybody understand this? Okay. Let's move on. Because now Yeshua has told us his objective. And let us see the objective which he has given us. In verse 19 he says, so whoever disobeys the least of these misvotes and teaches others to do so will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Well, right there, that pretty much disqualifies 90% of the so-called churches in this country who teach that the laws has been abolished and the commandments have no efficacy in your salvation. So we won't spend too much time on that. That's pretty direct. But we will spend a little time in the next section of this verse. But whoever obeys them and so teaches will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now I like to go to the Hebrew on this out of the Hebrew manuscript of the Gospel of Matthew. Although that is a good translation, much better than the King James Version, it still needs to be defined directly from the Hebrew. Because there's a word there, obeying, that in the Hebrew is a more emphatic term used, a more definite term used term where you can really understand what Yeshua has given us as a responsibility to perform. So in the Hebrew it says, Vecha mikein, Vecha lomid, Gedol, Yikra, Ba mochut shamayim. And I want you to notice the word kayim. So that is a word that means to fulfill. Hmm. So let's read it now, understanding that Kayin, Mim Kayin means, with the Mim in the prefix of the word, means fulfilling. It becomes prepositional. A constant action that reaches an end. Veha Mi Kayin, Veha Lomid Gadola, Yikra Ba Mokut Shamachin. And that from fulfilling, and that teaching it, great he is called in the kingdom of Shamayim, heaven. Hmm. So here it is saying that your responsibility is not just to obey, as it is written in the translation, but Kayim, Mim Kayim, fulfilling it. And that from fulfilling it, and that teaching it, that is the commandments, great, gadol, yikra, ba mochut, shamahim, great, he shall be called in the kingdom of heaven. So your greatness is not defined by the standard of this world. It is defined by your keeping of the commandments, your teaching of the commandments, your enlightening others to the will of the Father.